Welcome chemistry students to the mystery gas investigation. In this lesson we're going to use some chemical properties to identify different gases. Uh, identifying gases is very difficult. Many gases cannot be detected by human senses and many gases are dangerous to inhale or maybe dangerous because they displace oxygen and of course us being animals we need oxygen and so if there are gases that push, push that oxygen away uh, we can't inhale the oxygen that we need and we can suffocate. Uh, the gases in front of your face are uh, an impure mixture, it's a solution. There are many different gases that you're inhaling right now, certainly some oxygen and some nitrogen, uh, but there are other gases in there too, uh, and they're very difficult to tell apart from one another, to tell if they're there or not. So one way to do that is with a chemical test. Uh, the chemical test relies on the chemical properties of those gases, and a positive result for the tests uh, allows us to know that the gases are present. So we look at two tests. There's only going to be four tests discussed, but we're going to do two of them. So the first one is this test for oxygen, and it's also known as the glowing splint test. Uh, oxygen's chemical properties include supporting combustion. So oxygen is really important. It does a lot of great things. It is the second most reactive element in our universe, uh, but it uh, at this point is really important because it supports combustion. It supports burning, and that's really what we're going to look at. We're going to look at whether something burns uh, and if it does, then we're going to assume that oxygen is present. That's our test. So our test is we're going to light a wooden splint on fire. I'll show you those in a second. We blow out the flame, but we leave the splint glowing. That's why we call it the glowing splint test. It looks like a little orange ember. Sorry about that. And then we place the glowing uh, splint, the little ember, in the gas that's to be tested. If the glowing splint uh, does burst into flame, then oxygen is present. And if the glowing splint does not, sorry, does not burst into flame, then oxygen is not present. So we can take something that's orange, ember-like, and if it pops into a big flame, then we'll know that oxygen is present. And that's essentially what's going on in here. In our picture, we would just have really, there wouldn't be any flame. There's maybe a little bit of smoke. Um, but what we really have is just that little orange ember on the stick. And then as we put the stick into the test tube here, um, eventually, if, if oxygen is there, if O2 is in here, then you'll see the flame, right? You'll see that flame reemerge and it'll become nice and bright. And that's our test for oxygen. The second test that we're going to do is a test for the gas called hydrogen. Now, both oxygen and hydrogen are going to be clear, odorless, colorless, tasteless gases, and they wouldn't be possible to test with your senses. So, we're going to use uh, this burning splint test. Now, one of hydrogen's chemical properties is the fact that it's explosive. So if we heat hydrogen up, it can explode. And so when ignited, hydrogen explodes. And certainly a warning here, uh, the test must be performed in a test tube rack because the explosion can be a little uh, scary sometimes. And if we're not careful, we drop our test tube. And of course, our test tube is going to have uh, chemicals in it. They could be hot. They could be on fire. We don't want to drop them on our toes, of course. So our test is to light a wooden splint on fire. So we're going to have a little fireball. And we're going to place that fireball in the gas to be tested. If the gas does explode, then hydrogen is present. If the gas does not explode, then hydrogen is not present. So we're going to use this, this explosion here as a clue that hydrogen gas is present. Okay. There are other tests here, uh, three and four. This is a test for carbon dioxide. This is called the lime water test, and they use something called lime water. Carbon dioxide's chemical properties includes forming a precipitate. Now, precipitate's a little solid. We would make this, this lime water go from a watery, transparent color to a, to a milky kind of color, and that's what the precipitate is. And that's when carbon dioxide is present. So, in the presence of carbon dioxide, we just bubble it through this lime water, and the solution becomes cloudy or milky. Now, if the gas um, does cause lime water to become milky, then um, CO2, carbon dioxide, is present. If the gas does not cause lime water to become milky, then CO2 is not present. And then the last test here um, involves uh, water droplets. It's a test for water. Um, it, there are test strips um, called cobalt chloride test strips. Um, and so water's chemical properties including, include causing cobalt chloride test strips to change color. 
in the presence of water, cobalt chloride strips change from blue to pink. So if the cobalt chloride test strip, which is a little piece of paper, uh, does change from blue to pink, then um, water is present. If the cobalt chloride test strip does not, oops, sorry, if it does not change color, then water, oopsies, uh, water is not present. So they use these in Apple phones a lot and other manufacturers. They put this little piece of paper in the phone where the water would leak in if there's a little leak. Um, and the water would cause this piece of paper to change color. And Apple and a lot of manufacturers use this to determine whether or not the warranty on the phone is violated. So you know, I mean, if your phone gets dropped into water, uh, it violates the warranty. Uh, and one way for a manufacturer to know is to put this paper into the phone. If the paper changes color, then it's likely the phone has been in water and it violates the, the warranty kind of purpose. Now our purpose in the investigation is to identify unknown gases by analyzing the results of chemical tests. So we're going to do a few tests here. So it's a good idea to pause it, read through the instructions yourself. I'm going to read through the instructions as I go through the actual demonstrations of the two tests. We're going to do this magnesium ribbon and hydrochloric acid, I'll chat about that. Then this hydrogen peroxide and yeast, and we'll chat about that and there's a place to record your observations. So you want to grab that so that you can record your observations that are there. Okay, so first test, magnesium ribbon and hydrochloric acid, and I need to do a few pieces to get that started. So one, I think I'm hoping you can see the bench this way, and what I have here in my hand is something called a striker or a sparker and it's got magnesium in the in the end piece there a little piece of sandpaper for lack of a better term and striking it back and forth exposes the magnesium to it strips off the old layer of magnesium exposing fresh magnesium that reacts with the oxygen there and gives you little sparks now this piece of equipment here i have is a bunsen burner the gas is off uh, i'm going to turn put my striker on it open up the gas and uh, get a flame. And I'm not sure if you can see that in the, the camera there, but there's a, a flame coming out of the Bunsen burner now that it's lit. Um, maybe a little difficult to see with that uh, backdrop there in the background. A little tough to see. Um, I don't want to do anything silly, like put paper near it so that you can see it because, of course, that's silly. Now, this is a, a wooden splint. It's just a little piece of wood, looks like a little popsicle stick kind of thing, but a lot of little piece of wood. I assume it's bamboo, I'm not too sure. It's just uh, nice and light and uh, burns easily. And so what we're gonna do with this is to help perform those tests. We're gonna do the burning splint test and the uh, glowing splint test to test for the presence of these gases. So we're gonna produce the gases and then run those tests to see what kind of gas was made. So the first thing that we wanna do, let me the first thing I do is show you the different kinds of embers. So, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is light up my uh, splint just to show you what it looks like. In the class, they're, they're precious. We're running out of them quickly, so you want to be careful uh, that we don't lose them, of course. But I've got two types of situations. So one is the flame, the flaming splint test. I literally have a flame on there. And the other one is the, the glowing splint test, which is the, the red ember there, that orange ember. And that red or orange ember there is the glowing splint test. We're going to use that to check for gases as well. So both of those are parts of our test, two different tests. So the first thing we want to do is produce the gases. To produce the gases, I'm going to run that first test that you see is hydrochloric acid and magnesium. Now, um, hydrochloric acid does not have really identifying uh, physical properties. There's nothing I can do to look at that and say, oh, it's got this certain... You know, color or viscosity or something. It's really going to help me identify what that is. It looks really just like water. There aren't great physical properties to help me to know what exactly that is. Now the other thing that we're going to use, the other reactant, is magnesium ribbon. So it looks like a little piece of shiny tinfoilish kind of stuff. Every once in a while there's a little black uh, piece of oxidation where oxygen is reacting with the magnesium, but kind of shiny, lustrous, hard, and uh, I, I would think maybe three millimeters across or so, and then they're cut to different lengths. This one is maybe about the size of my, my fingernail or something like that in terms of length. Okay, and all I really want to do is combine the magnesium with the hydrochloric acid and observe. Okay, so let's do that first. 
I don't know if you can hear it. You can potentially see some of the changes. Maybe you see something being produced up inside the glass, not only on the surface of the glass itself, but something that's rising out of the bubbles. Okay, and you know, I think to yourself, what is it that's going to rise and fill a space, fill a container? And moreover, just notice the bubbles. Okay, we're going to look at chemical changes and chemical indicators of chemical changes. But maybe there's some things that we're worth chatting about. Okay, so now I'm going to run my two tests. My first test is the uh, flowing splint test. So I'm taking my uh, splint, I've lit it on fire. I don't want the flaming test first. I'm going to use the, the glowing splint test first. So I'm going to shake it out as a little violently, I guess, to get just the glowing splint, just the orange thing. And then I'm going to combine the two. Okay, and not much of a result there. Okay. Um, Again, the two results we have is a, the reemergence of a flame. We've got a fire popping out, or what we'll have is an explosion. Okay, so there's the flame. Not going to do that one yet. Just going to do the, the burning ember test, the glowing splint test, glowing splint test. Not much of a result. Okay, so let's do the next test. We can resort, record those results. We can pause and record the results there. Now the second test is the flame, flaming uh, splint test the burning splint test, and the gas. All right, okay, so hopefully you can hear that one. Okay, and I, there aren't enough gases to do it a second time, at least not yet. Let's see if we can do it once more. So again, there's the flame. Maybe you can make that on the camera. In my test tube, making gases, I got these bubbles forming. The bubbles, you know, you can guess what's in those bubbles, maybe. And just not enough of that gas to, to for a second uh, second result. Okay, so that's the one test. Hydrochloric acid and magnesium produces a gas. We had two results there. One was the glowing splint. The other one was the burning splint test. Glowing splint, not much of a result, but the the flaming splint test, the burning splint test. The one where there's a flame, uh, much more interesting. Those results. So now we're going to run on to the second experiment. We need to produce a new set of gases. And test those gases. So to do that, we've got two things here. Uh, one is again another transparent liquid. Really hard to tell what that is. There are not really good physical properties that help me identify that substance. I don't know really what that is unless I you know, poured it out of a container and labeled the container to keep track of what it is. So this is actually a hydrogen peroxide, the liquid there. Now this is a yeast, a brewer's yeast. You put it into like breads and pizza dough and stuff like that. Um, it's, uh, it's a fungus uh, yeast, and so it's uh, great for a number of different things. Yeast are really, really, really important. They're probably one of the most important uh, organisms we have as a lab organism when we study genetics and things like that. But uh, what that's going to do is it's going to help react with this. We used to use apparently something called manganese dioxide, and they don't let us use that anymore in the workplace here at school. So we use the yeast instead. It affects the results a little bit, but we hopefully still get some good results. So hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to try my best not to pour them traditionally where I sort of can't one into the other. This is one where I sort of want to dump my yeast in as quickly as I can without hopefully dropping it all over the table like I did, but I don't want to get it stuck on the side. I want to try and get it right into the test tube as best as I can, and that's a, a tricky thing to do. The yeast often sticks if the test tube's a little wet. So then I, I find I get a little bit of a better result if I try my best to mix the yeast into the solution. What you'll notice is you get lots of bubbles, and then unfortunately I get it to the bubbles to rise. You see bubbles forming, which is okay. Another indicator for us. You wonder what's in those bubbles, like I do, because we want to use our tests to figure out what is in there. What is actually that gas now being made? And again, two tests. So first, my splint. I'm going to light it up. I'm going to get my embers first. I'm going to do the glowing splint test. The embers. Nice and orange, nice and hot embers. So glowing, so that's a burning splint, flaming splint. I don't want the flame. I don't want the burning one. I want the glowing one. So rough shake and uh, glowing splint test, okay? And then into my gases. I don't know if you see that. I have my hand in the way. But there it actually is. Flame again. Let's see if we can do that one more time, okay? So shaking out the flame. No flame. Just the hot ember. Gas. What gas is this? 
and uh, I just don't have enough for a nice positive result, okay? But maybe you saw that flame pop out. And then I can do the other test as well. I want to do the flaming squint test. I want the glowing, uh, sorry, the burning squint test. I want to test that fire. Does this gas react with the presence of a fire, the, the, the fire itself? So let's try that. And no, it just sort of just sort of extinguishes the flame and puts it out. Okay, so that one's a little bit tougher to see, and it's ultimately because I think the yeast isn't the best reagent, but it's the safest one that they let us use. Um, and on the one hand, you bring in the orange ember, and you get a hopefully a reemerge of that flame, a nice glow. Uh, but the other case, not so so much joy. Okay, so uh, those are our tests for chemical properties. Uh, oxygen likes to, sorry, bring this up, like we saw, oxygen, if oxygen is present, then oxygen will take that little ember and turn it back into a flame. And that's going to tell you that oxygen is there. For the other test, you take a fire and you hear an explosion, the explosion is because hydrogen is there. Okay, now what you want to do is take the observations from the video, go into the, uh, we'll pass the methods into the observations table, and start to record your observations there. And we'll certainly discuss and carry on from there. Of course, if you have any questions, you need any help, anything comes up, just of course let me know. We'll go from there.